Hey, Caption has finally released Caption for iPad, and to be honest, this is the most controversial release of Caption ever. I just love this app for the new ultra-convenient interface, for the same processing engine as the desktop Capture One. It's just fantastic to have the natural and realistic color rendering on iPad, and this app is so fast. At the same time, the very first version of Caption for iPad lacks layers, curves, levels, and many other advanced tools. Fortunately, there is a way to apply the missing adjustments using styles, making the Caption for iPad a solid standalone app. So, grab your iPads and let's see how to get maximum out of the new app. Before we proceed, I have some awesome news for you. I have published my new book, Caption Hidden Features. Caption Hidden Features is a collection of more than 200 pro hints to improve your Caption workflow. This book was created for Caption users who are familiar with all the essential features and are looking to discover advanced tools and workflow hints. Caption Hidden Features comes in two formats, PDF and EPUB, so it's super convenient to read it on your iPad. You can download four chapters from the book free of charge. Go to alexandrocom slash book or just click the link below the video. Now to the Caption for iPad. Let's start with the image import. You can import photos from your cloud drives, such as iCloud or Dropbox. Also, you can connect your camera or card reader to the iPad to upload images directly. I will go with the A card reader. After the import, you can organize images into albums by dragging a single image into an album or selecting a batch of images in the right upper corner. By the way, to change thumbnail size, make a simple two-finger gesture. Now let's edit an image and see how all the controls work. I love the interface of Caption for iPad. It's a brilliant mix of simplicity and usability. It's designed for a two-hands workflow where you select tools with your left hand and adjust them with your right hand. Tools are not blocking the image, your attention is always focused on it. This approach allows you to control adjustments quickly and intuitively. If you prefer, you can switch tools to the right side of the screen. Also, there is a way to control all the adjustments with a single hand. Simply hold down a tool and move your finger. By the way, I like how this setup works with Apple Pencil. Here are several hints to make your editing faster and easier. Double tap on an image to zoom in to 100%. A long tap on an image activates before-after mode. Two-finger tap brings up the histogram. Double tap on a dial to reset an adjustment. Also, you can move tool panel if it covers an important part of your image. Now let's have a quick walkthrough of all the tool tabs. The first tab is for image calling, where you can set ratings and color tags. By the way, the second click on a rating or a color tag resets them. Also, here's a hint to speed up image calling. You can set rating and color tag, copy these adjustments and apply them in a single click. Just keep in mind that ratings and tags don't copy by default, so you need to click modify after copying the adjustments and select them manually. 
Next, we're switching to the Shape tab, where you will find Crop, Rotation and Keystone tools. The Crop tool works just as you expect. There is a common choice of aspect ratios and the cropping is pretty intuitive. Rotation and Keystone tools have fewer possibilities than the Desktop app, but I think we'll see improvements in the future updates. So, now we are ready to adjust the exposure and color on an image. Here comes the real advantage of Caption for iPad – natural color rendering and an advanced processing engine. Initial color rendering is my real issue with Lightroom Mobile and other iPad image editing apps. See, here is how Caption for iPad renders color on this portrait. This is the natural skin color I have expected here. Now, let's compare it to Lightroom Mobile. No matter what color profile we choose, we still can't get this clear and realistic skin tone. The color is always a bit dirty. It had to be modified just to reach the initial picture of Caption for iPad. The same goes with landscapes. Caption renders all the fine details in shadows and highlights, providing a natural and realistic look. In Lightroom, you had to spend some time adjusting the image to get rid of this lifeless look. The problem is that before Caption for iPad, you had no alternatives to this color rendering, so many photographers, myself included, just had to accept it. Now I can finally edit images on iPad and see the real color. The second advantage is the processing engine of the desktop Capture One. The first version of Caption for iPad offers a pretty limited amount of tools compared to the desktop app. Here you will find white balance, exposure, SGR, clarity, dehaze, basic color editor, vignetting, and black and white. However, these tools work the same way as on the desktop, offering the pro level of control over the image. For instance, Dehaze in Lightroom Mobile has a pretty bold impact on your image. In Caption for iPad, you can set haze tone manually, having full control over the picture. The Clarity tool also works way more accurately compared to Lightroom Mobile. Plus, you can choose from various clarity modes. And again, check out this distinction in color. HDR tool in Caption and Lightroom has always worked differently, despite the similar names of the sliders. The result of this is that in Caption 1 you can accurately recover information from the darkest and brightest areas of the image without making the whole image look flat. In the next step, you will find tools to make the final touches in your editing – sharpening, noise reduction and film grain. Yet, the first version of Caption for iPad lacks almost all the advanced tools such as curves, levels and color balance. The great news is that there is still a way to apply them on iPad. Caption for iPad uses the same processing engine as the desktop app. Thus, it has all the tools built in, but there is just no interface yet to control them. The solution is to use Caption styles from your desktop app. Styles apply safe adjustments on an engine level. You don't need access to the Curve tool or Color Balance to apply a style with these settings. Here is how you can import styles into Capture One for iPad and enhance your workflow. First, you need to locate an installation file of a style pack on your desktop machine and transfer it to an iPad. Next. Double-click on this file and styles will automatically appear in Caption for iPad. Now you can enhance your iPad workflow with the desktop Caption color grading tools. Basically, you can now apply the pro-quality looks to your images anywhere – on the trip, when waiting for an appointment, or just browsing images after the shoot. 
The styles I use in this video are from my new set of Pro Color Grading Styles. Pro Color Grading Styles is a set of 50 unique styles for Capture One. It allows you to apply various color gradings to your images quickly. Just scroll through the styles and you will find the look that fits your image best. You can download 5 sample styles free of charge. Simply go to alexonrod.com free or click the link below the video. Plus, you can save 20% with the Styles plus eBook bundle. When you have found a look that fits your image well, you can easily apply these adjustments to other photos. First, you need to copy adjustments by clicking this icon. If you need to exclude some adjustments from copying, click Modify. By the way, here you can see that our image contains adjustments that can only be edited in Caption Pro. These are the adjustments from the style we have applied before. Next, click Select to choose images to apply the adjustments. You can pick images manually or quickly select all photos in an album. Now click the Apply icon and you will see all your images are getting a new look. Finally, let's see how to export your images from the iPad. The first way is to use the built-in exporter. Here you can choose between exporting into JPEG or EIP formats. For JPEG, you can set resolution, image quality and a watermark. AIP format allows you to pack your raw file and all image adjustments into a single file. You can open this file on a desktop machine with CaptionOne and continue the editing. Now let's click Export and here we can set the destination. You can save your image to Photos, Files, Dropbox or just airdrop it to your desktop computer. Still, if you make only initial adjustments on iPad and you need to finish the editing on your desktop Capture One, it's way easier to send images using the Cloud Transfer. Cloud Transfer requires Capture One 22 version 15.3 or newer, so make sure to update your software. In Capture One, right-click on the toolbar and choose Customize. Here you will find the Cloud Transfer icon, drag and drop it into the toolbar. Now click the icon and you will see the Cloud Transfer settings. Simply choose any album from your iPad that you wish to transfer and location where to import the images. By the way, there is a reason why this feature is called Cloud Transfer and not Cloud Storage. Caption for iPad doesn't store your images in a cloud. Keep this in mind before deleting any images from the iPad. The transfer is finished. As you can see, we now have the raw files with all the adjustments and ratings on the desktop machine. So you're free to continue the editing. So let's see what we have got with the first version of Caption for iPad. Foremost, we now have realistic and natural color rendering on iPad. The amount of tools is pretty limited yet, still you can apply advanced image adjustments with Capture One styles. Also, you can easily transfer raw files to finish the editing on the desktop. What do I miss the most? Obviously, layers. The touch screen is just created for layers. Drawing mask with an Apple Pencil is an entirely new image editing experience. I hope Capture One developers will make layers available in one of the upcoming updates because it's a real game changer for image editing on iPad. Tether shooting with iPad would also be great to have, as well as direct access to advanced tools. Nevertheless, I think it's really important to support Caption developers now. I mean, yes, Lightroom Mobile offers a whole bunch of tools on iPad, but there is no natural color that we love and that we need. And if you wish to have all the advanced tools in Caption for iPad, we must show the developers that we are here, we're waiting for them. Thank you for watching. I plan to record new videos on Caption for iPad, so subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of them first.